There's a new breed of nuclear reactor that's generating plenty of excitement, in part because its boosters say it's smaller and safer. Energy Now's Daniel Seberg has more on these mini nuke reactors in this Energy Next. Imagine a small town, perhaps your town, whose energy source comes from a nuclear power plant miles and miles away. As time goes on, though, the town grows, along with its energy demands. Not to the point where building a whole new power plant is needed, but perhaps a small plant, one that generates just the amount of energy the little town needs. And let's make it modular so it could grow along with the town. It might not even impact your view. Part of the mini reactors is meant to live underground. Enter the small modular reactor. The concept is just a reactor inside of essentially a stainless steel thermos bottle, underwater, underground. Nuclear scientists here at New Scale Energy in Corvallis, Oregon, have come up with a design for one of those small modular reactors. The hope is their SMR will bring safe, cheap, and clean energy to homes across the country. While no one would or should trust me to fire up this test facility, it is part of a working scale model of new scales design with at least one rather important difference for the moment. If this had a nuclear core in it, we would be dead right now, I'm guessing, <laughs> well, well, or very close to. Well, there would be some regulations that would prevent us from being here. <laughs> sure. The man who does push the buttons around here is Jose Reyes, founder of New Scale. Inside here is our reactor vessel. The reactor is designed to be less powerful than conventional reactors, but that also means it doesn't require the same kind of space. What would be the output of one of these? Uh, it would be 45 megawatts electric net. So that what would that power. power roughly? I mean. So that's about 45,000 homes. A far cry from the massive 1,000 plus megawatt plants we're used to today. To have a customizable source of energy seems like a smart idea, but the acceptance of all things nuclear remains a work in progress. I hate to bring up the Homer Simpson example. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> but I mean, there are people who still think that, gosh, you know, nuclear meltdown could happen any time, and, and Homer Simpson's at the controls, and we're all doomed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, and I've met people who, who really believe, well, when we talk about technology, they, they really assume it's a technology 30 years ago. And that's just not the case. What has changed, though, is the administrative, the management of the plants, the safety uh, of the plants in terms of how we look at operations of the plant in terms of uh, the, the safety. All safety measures that were put in place after March 28, 1979. Near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, an accident at a nuclear power plant. The date of the nation's most infamous nuclear accident at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania. While no one was killed or injured, it brought about major changes in the way nuclear plants are built and operated. But it also created fear. So despite nuclear safety records since, people have just recently started to consider nuclear as a form of clean energy. 60 years ago, when people dressed for family dinner, going nuclear just meant bombs. And cover. But nukes have long been a part of life here at the Department of Energy's Savannah River site outside Aiken, South Carolina. And today, the seeds are being planted for a new beginning, combining the waste from the old as fuel for the new. In the mid-1950s, this is where weapons-grade plutonium was extracted. Of course, in the late 1980s, that process was stopped. But even though the Cold War has ended, the new battleground is what to do with the hazardous materials that are left over. Was there any idea of what would happen to this facility during that time? No, they didn't have a vision, and frankly, the vision is still evolving as we speak. Mike Nevetta is part of Savannah River Nuclear Solutions, a company with a mission of helping the government figure out how to clean up the leftovers of bomb making, while also finding a use for some of what's now just nuclear waste. Savannah River is looking to another small modular reactor to answer some of its prayers. The facility has signed a deal with GE Hitachi to build one that would use leftover plutonium at the site as a fuel. How do we disposition that plutonium? Because our president's taken a very good leadership role as far as uh, being aggressive on let's get rid of our nuclear weapons and let's put that material, let's get rid of it. And we see this reactor as a way to do that. Eric Lowen is the chief consulting engineer for advanced nuclear plants at GE Hitachi. He says even though the reactors are small, don't expect one to pop up in your neighbor's backyard tomorrow. But they will have to meet all the safety standards imposed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Though it is small, we can build it in a factory. You're going to still have it in a protected site for security reasons. You're going to do a lot of those things that we do that are required for nuclear power plants. And just because the reactor uses spent fuel, that does not mean it won't create its own waste. 
Michelle Boyd from the Physicians for Social Responsibility, which has traditionally opposed nuclear power, says the nation's growing level of comfort with nuclear reactors has more to do with good PR than anything else. I think that the nuclear industry has done an excellent job of selling the concept of nuclear power as clean and green as a solution for climate change. But then the question becomes, if you ask people in general, do you want one next to your house? The percentage of people who actually do is decreases significantly. But according to New Scale, it's not just good PR. The industry's entire approach to safety has changed. Now we have the online simulations which allow you to, to, to uh, look at different events in the plant, uh, as well as modeling at events in, in advance. These are assessments of every valve and component in the plant uh, to look at what happens if this valve fails or that valve fails, and every combination in between, and assess the safety in that manner. So it's a much more comprehensive safety approach. Back at Savannah River site, are small modular nuclear reactors going to be a reality one day? Is that absolutely, absolutely, absolutely? If you talk to the folks in, in Vienna at the International Atomic a Energy Agency, they predict that by 2030 there'll be over 300 small modular reactors deployed globally. 300. Incidentally, they'll also now tell today you today there are zero. There are zero today. But no one will be hitting the proverbial power button anytime soon. Before the folks at New Scale or Savannah River can even start construction, they need to get the OK from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And so the exploration continues. While the research has advanced, the actual building of small modular nuclear reactors has yet to begin. How far away is this from being a reality? We, we are intent to submit the design certification document in 2012. OK. So uh, we'll submit that document. Uh, and that's the basis for the NRC to give us approval. And that takes what? Well, at there, least a few years. It takes about, yeah. They're they're saying typically three years. So 2015, at the earliest. To, that's, exactly, to right? start to, to start the start build. production. Yeah, and we're looking for this plant it's about a three-year build for okay. a 12-module plant. So 2018 really is sort of the earliest online date. If everything goes just if right. Everything's perfect. <laughs> that's which right. We know that happens all the time. <laughs> that's <so>. right. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? I thought a nuclear reactor would be so complicated. By that time, Homer Simpson may even have retired. So Homer Simpson does not work here. Homer Simpson does not work here. <laughs> we do use him as an example, though, of what not to do. <laughs> In Corvallis, Oregon, Daniel Seberg, Energy Now. You won't be seeing any mini nuke reactors until the Nuclear Regulatory Commission goes through its list of 10 concerns. That's everything from control room staffing to security requirements.